Let's meet Nashua Community Music School. This school has an eclectic offering of instrument and voice lessons, as well as music therapy. Instructors will teach you about various musical instruments, including a fun segment on Trash Talk. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm the executive director of the Nashua Community Music School. And I was thinking to myself, what's the best way to introduce the music school to people who haven't heard of us before? And I thought, well, with a song. So I hope you like it. We've worked for 35 years to make Nashua proud. Showing our love the best way we know how. Oh, I, I love the music school. For people of all ages with a song in their heart. We're the place for you to make a brand new start. Oh, I, I love the music school. We design each program to inspire you. Whether you're a pro or just trying something new. Oh, I, I love the music school. Our talented teachers have the best tools to share. Challenging you while always showing you they care. and I'm going to take you on a safari today and we are going to explore all of the woodwind instruments. Let's go! Let's talk about some woodwind instruments. I, can you see some here? I don't have all of them, but I do have a lot. All woodwinds produce sound by splitting exhaled air on a sharp edge, such as a reed, or what's called a thipple. Now, what that means is woodwind instruments produce sound by blowing air, and air blows across a reed or a small hole that produces the vibration and makes the sound. There are two main types of woodwind instruments the flutes, and reed instruments. Here are just a few examples of woodwind instruments. We have the flute, we have the clarinet, we have the oboe, saxophone, and bassoon. Many people get their instrument families confused. They get confused between brass and woodwind because they both produce sound with air and wind. 
Did you know that not all woodwind instruments are made of wood? Sometimes they can be made of other materials as well. Did you know even, even some wood, woodwind instruments are made of earth materials, like the ocarina, which is made of clay? Some people will notice the saxophone, although it's made of brass, it is not a brass instrument. It uses a reed to produce the sound. What's that I see by my plant? That's a clarinet! Yes, this is a B-flat clarinet. Let's learn a little bit about it. This is my clarinet. Now, a clarinet has one reed, a single reed, attached to what's called a ligature right here. And it has, this is the bell, and see how it flares out like that? That's so special about the clarinet. I'm going to play a little bit for you. Now, a fun fact about the clarinet is that it has the widest range of all the woodwind instruments. So that means it can play some very low notes. And it can play some very, very high notes. Ready for this? Ooh, that's a high note. So that is my clarinet. I'm going to go put it back in its spot. Hold on. I'm back. There is one famous clarinetist that you might know of. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a flute with me right now because my flute is at school. So I'm going to show you a little video of someone playing the flute. Do you see our next instrument? Do you know what it is? I'll give you a second to guess. Let's see. Do you know? That's right, it's the saxophone. Now, there's a lot of types of saxophones. This one that I have right here that I'm going to play for you is the alto saxophone. I also have a tenor saxophone that I'll show you. This is my alto saxophone. Now, there's parts of it that are very similar to the clarinet. It has one reed. Ooh, if I can get this the right way. There we go. One reed that's attached to a mouthpiece with the ligature and has a similar shaped bell, except on the saxophone, the bell curves up. Don't get confused that you see brass. Remember, wind instruments produce their sound by having wind blow across a reed. I will play you a little bit. Saxophones can be very loud. I use a neck strap because the saxophone is pretty heavy and there's no way for me to hold it up without having some support. So that's why saxophonists use a neck strap. What I love about the saxophone is it plays so many different genres. A genre is a different type of music. It can play hip hop, it can play jazz, you can play classical, you can play rock. That's one thing I love about the saxophone. Let's go look at some more. Whoa, ho, ho. what is that? 
That is a big, big saxophone. This saxophone is the tenor saxophone. And guess what? It's not even the biggest kind of saxophone. Let's hear what this one sounds like. Do you see something that's a little different about the other saxophone? Look at this. Yeah, the neck of the tenor saxophone has this little curve to it. That's one way that you can know that this is definitely the tenor saxophone. Again, it has one reed attached by a ligature. And this saxophone's a lot bigger, but it has a similar shape to the bell and this, a similar layout of keys and how they are put on the instrument. What's cool about the saxophone is if you know how to play one of the other one saxophone, you can easily switch to the other one or any other kind because the fingerings, which is the way that you put your your fingers on the keys, they're all the same. A G on the tenor, you do the same way as you would do on the alto. So I'm going to play you a little bit. I can't play you a lot because my instrument's a little broken, but I will play for you what I can. As you can hear, it has a much deeper sound. Remember, bigger instruments have a deeper sound than smaller instruments. Now that's all I have for today for woodwind instruments. I'm going to show a couple videos to show some instruments that I just don't have today. And until next time, this is Mrs. Porter's Instrument Safari. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Duck went squishy, splashy. Cat went fiddle I fee. Bought me a dog, the dog pleased me. Fed my dog under yonder tree. Dog went woof, woof. Rabbit went flipsy, flopsy. Duck went squishy, splashy. Cat went fiddle I fee. Bought me a whale, the whale pleased me. Fed my whale under yonder tree. Wait a minute. What's a whale doing under a tree? Whale went shh, shh. Dog went woof, woof. Rabbit went flipsy, flopsy. Duck went squishy, splashy. Cat went fiddle I pee. Thanks for helping. What did the cat do again? The cat went fiddle I pee. Now your turn, all by yourself. The cat went. Thank you. That will be your job when we do the song again. You get to do all the cat parts. Bought me a cat, the cat pleased me. Fed my cat under yonder tree. Cat went. Bought me a duck, the duck pleased me. Fed my duck under yonder tree. Duck went. Squishy, splashy, cat went. Bought me a rabbit, the rabbit pleased me. Fed my rabbit under yonder tree. Rabbit went flipsy, flopsy. Duck went squishy, splashy. Cat went fiddle I pee. Bought me a dog, the dog pleased me. Fed my dog under yonder tree. Dog went woof, woof. Rabbit went flipsy, flopsy. Duck went squishy, splashy. Cat went. Bought me a whale, the whale pleased me. Fed my whale under yonder tree. Whale went shh, shh. Dog went woof, woof. Rabbit went flipsy, flopsy. Duck went squishy, splashy. Cat went. Nice job with the cat went fiddle I see. Hi there, my name is Ray O'Coin, and I'm the director of the Trash Talk Recycled Percussion Program at the National Community Music School. Today I wanted to talk to you about my favorite part of recycled percussion, what I call found sounds. That's where I go out and I just kind of find things by hitting them that I think sound good together. And what I did today was I went around the music school here and I found a few different things that I thought would be interesting to play. All I did was, you know, pick them up and kind of hit them and say, oh, that kind of sounds good. And I found four different things here that I thought would kind of go good together. This big plastic bin that produces kind of a low sound. This metal pail that produces kind of a high metal sound. This plastic bucket that has a high plastic sound. And then this trash barrel that has kind of a middle plastic sound. So that when I play them together, they kind of have a good sound. Okay, so you can put together anything like this around your house. Go around and just look and see what you have around because you can make something cool that works just like this with whatever you have. I promise you've got these cool sounds in your house too. Now, I'll show you something you can do with it because I know some of you probably don't know music and you probably don't, if I said a quarter note or if I read, you know, if I showed you a piece of music, you wouldn't really know what to do with it. So I'm gonna show you something you can do that doesn't, that you don't have to know anything about music. You just have to be able to count and be able to count to eight. So with your right hand, 
I want you to take a stick. You can use a stick like these, I, I found these, but you can also use sticks from your yard or maybe some wooden spoons from your kitchen, anything like that. But with your right hand on your lowest sound, for me it's this plastic bin here, I want you to hit that plastic bin eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I want you to keep on repeating that. So when you get to the eight, go back and do to the one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just keep on repeating it. With your left hand, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit some of these at the same time. And you can pick any number you want. So let's say with the metal, I'm gonna pick numbers three and seven, right? I'm just gonna hit numbers three and number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's kind of a cool pattern. If I speed it up a little bit, you hear this. Okay, let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let me say I'm gonna hit this plastic bucket on one, this on three, this on five and six, and this on seven. So it's a more complicated pattern, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 And that's all you need to do. Just keep in mind that this is going to give you all your time to keep you in place and all you're going to do is you're going to hit these with them at some other points. Easy way to remember this too would take a piece of like masking tape and on each of the different sounds you say write the number one, three, five, seven. You can put that and it will remind you which ones you want to hit. So as long as you just keep on counting one through eight you can make up a lot of music. So you know just have some fun with it. Community Music School. I'm so excited you're here so I can tell you a little bit about music therapy by answering some of the questions that I get asked by us. Music therapy is a research-based practice that uses music as a tool to accomplish your musical goals. That means that instead of a music lesson where the goal is to learn a specific musical skill or musical instrument, a music therapy session will feature a variety of instruments, different interventions, and client preferred music, all working toward a goal that is not necessarily musical. These goals can range from improving range of motion to increasing eye contact, improving self-expression, and overall quality of life. Every music therapy session looks different, and we have a team of excellent music therapists, all with different styles and specialties, ready to tailor their sessions to meet the needs of their clients. These sessions might feature singing, instrument playing, drumming, movement, sound writing, or song discussions. You should come to our virtual open house. It's on Wednesday, October 28th, we're doing two virtual open houses, one at 5 p.m. for families and young students, and one at 7.30 p.m. for adults and older adult students. You can use this link right here to sign up, or you can send us an email at info at nashuacms.org to let us know you're interested. We can't wait to see you there.
Thank you for joining our virtual Art Week. City Arts Nashua appreciates the support of our sponsors and you, our viewers. Please continue to support our local artists and our musicians and theater groups. For more information on arts in Nashua, please visit cityartsnashua.org.